All right. Well, welcome everyone. Um, I would like to call to order the regular meeting of the Board of Directors of Community Television of Santa Cruz County for March 27th, 2023. And I'll have the interim acting deputy secretary call the order, call the roll. <laughs> Chair Lanier. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, Director Maziars. Here. Me, I'm here. Director Hall. Here. Director O'Driscoll. Here. Director Mannheim. Yo. Director <laughs> Rand. Aquí estoy. <laughs> Director Warren. Here. And Director Shaw, not yet. Not yet. We, and I'll, for the record, anticipate her attendance uh, shortly. Okay. I declare we have a quorum. Yes. All right. Let me get my agenda here. Um, okay, um, item number two, oral communications. Any person may address the board during its oral communications period. All oral communications must be directed to an item not listed on today's consent or regular agenda and must be within the jurisdiction of the board. Any oral communications? We have no uh, visitors, seeing none. I will have um, number three, consideration of late additions to the agenda, additions and deletions to the consent and regular agenda. Seeing none, we will move on to the consent agenda. We have three items, approve meeting agenda, approve the board meeting minutes of February the 27th, 2023, and accept the February 2023 financial reports. Any um, comments, questions, discussion on either of those? None, seeing none, mm -hmm. I'll entertain them. Yes? I'll, I'll make a move motion. approval. Oh. Go ahead. All right. We have a, a motion by um, Director Mannheim, second by Director Rand. Rand. Um, I will do a uh, just a act or voice vote here. All in, in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Passed and so ordered. Moving on to the regular agenda, executive director's report. Becca, you have the floor. Okay, thanks. Thank you all for coming. And um, it's so exciting to see you all for the last uh, meeting on Zoom. So- um, <laughs> The last for now. Yeah, least. but well, yeah, for the time being. So um, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we're going to start as usual with revenue. So the co-working uh, center met its goal of um, uh, eight, eight, it's eight, th sorry, I thought about something else for a second, <laughs> $8,813. Actually, it met $8,800. So we we're $13 short last month. But um, the thing that the thing to notice that you probably saw was that was under. We've been at ten thousand for many months in a row, and suddenly we went down to eight. And we did lose one office, um, and that is what I think uh, the reason is. And um, but we are now back up to ten as of today for March. So we're at ten thousand four hundred today. So we're we're exceeding ten and exceeding our goal. And overall, we continue to be about five thousand dollars ahead of our project, projected revenue goal at this point in time. So um, we're doing okay. Um, in paid services, uh, we did eighteen government meetings in January, which is a pretty good number. And um, uh, coming up, our government service, um, our government meeting service has brought back two clients. We had a couple of clients that went away during the pandemic and they're coming back. So that's going to be great for us. And um, we are also making the transition to hybrid meetings. So we were, Victor was kind of hoping that everybody would just go back to the old way, but no, they all want to include people, the public to be able to call in on Zoom and things. So um, they've worked really hard to figure out how to make that happen and still only use one technician. And um, uh, Victor had the genius to ask uh, one of our 
um, government technicians, Melissa Potteroff, if she could think of a way to make that happen, and she did. Mm -hmm. And so it's a great system for us. We can <clears throat> run these meetings from our building, and they can happen in these smaller rooms where um, some some people like um, SLV, WD, San Lorenzo Water Valley, Valley Water District has its own little office where they like to meet in a real small conference room. And so we're able to run that meeting from our office. And that's Great. And others like it. Um, we'll be able to do that in a number of places. So it's really good for us. It's good for our people. They don't have to be in a group of others and they can run it from our office. And then they're always on the same equipment every time. So it's great. Um, we're going to use the same equipment to do our meetings. That's what we're going to do next month. And um, we'll we'll be using this system to actually to record the meeting and we won't have staff. I'll do it from my computer. So it should be, um, it's, it'll be great. We'll, we'll be able to control it ourselves. We won't require volunteers. We can keep down the number of people in the room and um, that'll, be, that'll be great. And um, also upcoming for the TV department is um, Artist of the Year event that's coming in May. Now, under facilities and equipment, um, this, <laughs> I always make this projection. I've been making it for a year now, but this time I think it's going to really happen. Um, we should uh, be moving all of our equipment, um, not all of it, but most of it, the key equipment out of the county and into our building and be able to run our TV station from there uh, by the first couple weeks in June. And that'll be that'll be fun and uh, easier for Victor. And he'll be able to in the past, Victor has had to drive to the county building and get someone to let him in so he can see if our signal is working right. Then he drives back <laughs> and mm -hmm. then if he can't he can't tell. So we're, we're having um, and this will help all of the volunteers who make programming in our uh, in our control room. There's uh, that I've never seen anything like this, but the control room doesn't have a monitor showing you what's on the air. So oh. you press the button and go just on faith. So now um, you'll be able to see that They'll, there's a program and, and you kind of you kind of have a program and and a preview, but you don't really know what's on the air. So um, this way we'll be assured that we are on the air and we can also run all those meetings from the control room and many other things. So. We're looking into one more thing. We had um, we have had periodically every every year two or three people networks will call us and ask if we can do a live shot from our building. And uh, but in the beginning we couldn't because we didn't have a satellite dish. <laughs> but but now we can stream. But the but the recently we talked to the net, a network. I think it was CBS, and they require a certain encoder for us to stream from our building. And that's all we need. So Victor has investigated this encoder. There's a couple of them, and uh, we're going to get the encoder so that we can stream live to the network from our building and we worked very hard with another company to try to put this very situation into our building because um, Zach Friend came to us and said you don't have to drive over the hill all the time I have to go to Milpitas to uh, do live shots and um, I would love to do them here and I worked with that company for months and then they moved across the country I never heard from them again hmm. but now technology has changed and we'll be able to do it ourselves so we're really excited about that yes Tom just a question: Is this is the encoder um, specific to CBS, or will it work for all the networks? It goes to all the networks. It's specific to how networks like their streams, so it is. Um, it's not very expensive. I think it's twenty five hundred dollars, and we'll be able to to stream to any network. It's very exciting. That's great. Yeah, that's great. That's great. It's I really think fun. it's an opportunity for more business, and I. I I think I've mentioned here yeah. in another meeting. University. In, university has all kinds of people who um, the, the PR shop up there likes to get them on TV and TV likes to get them. So somehow, yeah, that's great to have. We need, yeah. Petrea, I saw your hand. Um, I just wanted oh, to Joe. thank you. I mean, this has gone on for ages. <clears throat> I, I might suggest you call up Zach Friend just for a little PR and tell him I will. to do it. Yeah, I'm going as soon as we get it going, I'm going to let them yeah. know. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, because I think he'll spread the word too. And we'll certainly get Zach in there. So I th I think up until now, the gear has been real expensive and it hasn't, we haven't had an opportunity to, there wasn't a way for us to do it, but now something has changed. It just takes an quarter. And uh, Victor also works with the Warriors and they have it. That's how he figured out what was best yeah. to use. He went there and asked them what they use because they, they send to the network. So it's going to be great. And we, and he talked to the network too. We, um, when they wanted to do the live shot from our place, I didn't, I knew it was possible, but I didn't know what equipment we had. So I had them talk to Victor and that's how we discovered what we were lacking. So we're moving forward with that. It's very exciting. Well, following up on Tom's uh, question, do we know if that's consistent across all the networks, including CNN and PBS and those guys, they, they use the same encoder or same technology? Well, CNN is cable. So um, networks are broadcast and that's a little different. I'll ask Victor what he thinks. He told me there were two that the Warriors use. So maybe one is for cable. So I'll ask him about that. Oh, that's okay. a good question. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that, but yeah. Um, um, another question, you, you, we got two new um, or two clients back. Who are those? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see, they're in my notes. Uh, one is Pajaro Valley School District. And the other is, um, it's Soquel Creek Water District. Oh, great. Well, those are significant oh, yeah. Uh, entities. Yeah. Yeah, Good. you'll see them in the budget. <laughs> we got to add two, two and Soquel Creek is about a $9,000 deal every year. So that was great. a nice chunk of money to get back. Yeah, we're really happy about that. Um, and and so it's it's due to Victor's good work. He keeps in touch with those people, and and they trust him, and he he makes sure they get what they need. So it's thanks to Victor that these guys came back. Um, let's see. Um, then uh, oh, we had a uh, um someone vandalized our sign, our monument sign in the front of the building. They broke the plexiglass, and they've done it before. It's real annoying. So we're in the process of getting that fixed. And um, yeah, it's been hard to do, actually. Any uh, chance we could upgrade the quality of the sign while we're fixing it? <laughs> well, I went out and looked up at, up close, and it really needs to be replaced. But I think that'll be real expensive. It's all the joints are like, and they're like gaps. And um, and satellite, when we first started, they insisted that we use gray lettering. And so it just looks like our sign is faded. And there's a, a lot we could do to make the sign better. So um, I called a sign company. Also, there's still an Armada sign on the front of the building. And I want to take that off and put a CTV sign where it goes. And so I've been trying to get this um satellite recommended a sign company to me and i'm gonna try to talk to them but we also have our own sign company that have done has done the sign on the top of the building so i might talk to them as well but sometimes they're different that the sign that we have there's like a physical sign and the other signage guys painted it on the building so they might not both do the same kind of work but we've got a couple leads so we're looking into that um oh under equipment grants um thanks to director Maze Yards, we have a connection to the Resource Center for Nonviolence. And um, we are going to, we are trying to find a time when we're both free in April to meet, but it looks like they would like to um, get some equipment so they can do um, like three camera shoots in there. They have a lot of presentations and events and cool things. Um, and a lot of which are probably things we can telecast. So it's a good thing for us and a good thing for them. And we're anxious to make that happen. Yeah, that's going to be fun, I think. Um, I, I have to thank Keith, who actually referred them to me. So <laughs> started, oh. with, started with Keith, and then, uh, yeah, I followed up with them. Well, this is the best thing. This is the, yeah. We have a good board. Thank you all for thinking of these things and passing them on and making these connections, because that's really... Uh, you know, when I was at KQED, when anyone wanted to, they wanted to look for people on the board, they're always looking for capacity. And by that, they meant money. And so <laughs> I'm always looking for people who are connected. They have capacity for uh, friends and connections in places where, you know, we, you know, we all have connections in different places and that works out because we're connected to, we have a nice big network that way. So I'm always happy when these things come about and it's, um, I really appreciate you're not just thinking of us on board meeting day, but actually be uh, thinking of us when you're out and about. Um, 
So, so I have a little March update for you because uh, there's exciting things I wanted you to know. Uh, one is we've taken over the space that we leased last time uh, we were, you, you came in at the last minute, signed everything off so that Guy and I could sign the lease on time. And that all worked out. And now uh, we just today had all the new locks put on the doors. Um, we had to order them. You know, we have fancy locks where you open it with a little doodad instead of a key. And uh, those are programs so people can come in and out 24 hours a day. And so those went on today. And that's really cool. Um, they're working on the Wi-Fi today in that area of the building. We brought a switch thing that um, we needed. <laughs> I don't know what it does, but I bought it and it goes in the closet and they're working on that today. And uh, the new conference room, we've got two new conference rooms. The little one is good. We had the table refinished. It looks beautiful. Victor was great. His mom loaned us her truck and he transported the thing around and we got it back today and it looks wonderful. And um, we were able to get enough, enough of the old chairs from the old conference room. There were like 12 chairs or something. Six of them are actually okay. And we put those. So the new conference room, the little one's pretty much ready to go. I think it needs to be painted. It's kind of that awful apartment beige. Um, but uh, uh, we'll take care of that. And in the meantime, it could still be rented until we need to paint it. So um, that's happening. And we the other conference room still has a lot of work to be done. And it seems to be going kind of slowly. I'm going to get in touch with the landlord and sort of nudge him to get that going. I, you know, it's a, it's an insurance claim. And, you know, so but that happened in December and it's March. So it's almost April. So we that's a long time for nothing to happen. So um, I'll be. Uh, bugging him a little bit and um and that's it so we'll we'll probably uh open the new conference room um this week sometime we'll get it into the inventory and it'll be ready to go hi elizabeth and hey. um and that's my report for for um february and my update for things happening in march great thank you any um discussion comments questions all right, thanks Becca very much and welcome Elizabeth. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Thank um, you. Nice to see you. Let's go to um, where are we? Item number eight. Um, yes. Oh, item number eight. We'll um, take a look at a draft budget for 2023 2024, discuss and um, hopefully approve it. Becca, do you want to set this up? We should have all received copies of yeah. the budget with comparisons uh, the previous year. Yeah. So you all have your budgets in hand or do you need me to put this on the screen? Put it on the screen. Yeah, you can uh, put it on the screen. Okay. Just a second. Wait, I, I just gotta... printed it out. <laughs> I'm sorry. I said I just printed it out. <laughs> oh, okay. Now you've wasted six pages of good paper. Five pages. Oh, you are. Wow. Wow. Oh, I'm good. I put mine on the screen. I turned mine uh, 90 degrees to the left and I can right. read it now. I I'm know, sorry but... about that. I had the worst time with That's Excel. That's all right. It's, it's was fine. And it, then it printed green. I don't know why. Mm. I printed double sided, so it's only three sheets. <laughs> well done. Okay. I think this is the one. Yeah. Okay, um, let me then do the screen sherry thing. Share screen. It's me. I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, there we go. Oh, finally, things are working. There we go. Beautiful. I had such a terrible time with the budget today that I finally looked. I couldn't even email it right. I checked to see if Mercury is in retrograde. It is not. <laughs> it's only me, but it's coming. It's going to happen in April. Okay, so this is um, the operating budget, and um, you can uh, let me see. I want to I want to scooch this around so you are let seeing me just, it correctly. Let me interject. I wasn't clear on our agenda why mm -hmm. we're doing this at this time. Um, we need to hopefully have an approved budget that Becca can then take um, to the county. Is that right for their yeah. purposes? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, the county. Though even though it's only um, March, we need to have this ready for them so that they can include it in their um, 
budget hearings basically i guess right yeah they don't they do theirs on and they do something in may that requires them to look at our budget I mean, they don't our contract originally read September, and we'll go back to that next year because then our books will close. I'll have actuals. For the last few years, they've asked to have it early, and that means we kind of guess about the last quarter. I mean, we can surmise it's a good hypothesis, but it's not perfect. Right. And so um, uh, I need to, there's a place where once we get settled down, let me say a few words about the finance committee and what they did, and then yeah, we, we can go through it. But I don't want to interrupt her chain of thought of what's going on. Yeah, thank you. No, I've floated off screen. I should you still see the budget, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm just looking for I have a budget that has my notes in it that I need. So if you have questions, I'll be able to answer them. And I'm not seeing it anywhere. Maybe it's down here. Yeah, that's probably, nope, that doesn't have notes. Well, while Becca's uh, hunting, uh, hmm. the Finance Committee looked at this uh, last Monday and we went over it literally line by line. And there were some corrections made, some additions made, and uh, a couple other things that Becca may highlight. But the Probably the most significant thing was the issue of uh, salary increases uh, for the employees. And the budget has built in money for that. And Guy is going to meet with Becca on that issue in terms of her contract. And this will all be reported back to the board. And we recommended, and uh, Becca will have the funds in there for a 4% cost of living for our few employees. Uh, so those are really the significant things. And I'll ask Tom or Keith if they have anything else they want to add. And then I would recommend we kind of go through it item by item. We don't have to spend much time in any of them, but that way you can just scroll down and see what's happening. And Becca can highlight the few changes there were and why you may see a change between one column and another. Tom or, or Keith, do you have anything else to add? Nope. Nope. Okay, go ahead, Becca. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, I think I can remember my notes. Um, this is uh, this is the the top part here is the revenue that we bring in. I think most of you have seen one of these before. I don't think there's anybody that new. Um, but at the top is um, uh, the um, board of supervisors. So in the green stripe. That's the draft budget. That's the budget we're working on now. And, and went over to the left is the amended budget that we did last year. So that's our last year's budget. And so you can compare. Um, and then, so it just gives you a reference of what it was last year and what, it's, what is this year. And this year you can see the Board of Supervisors is a lot less, it's 12,000. And, you know, it has been in the like 20, 22 to 26,000 for years. And all of a sudden it isn't. And um, I went back and actually looked at each meeting, Victor documents them, and I was able to go back and add up uh, the difference between the last year and this year. And it is like half the meetings. They're having half the meetings and they're half as long. <laughs> so they're less, they're just meeting for less hours, about half as many hours as normal. So we don't know why. Um, I'm guessing that we had three years of pandemic and that might have been a big surge up for them to do all the things they needed to do to deal with that. And there may have been other things also, but um one one chunk, Becca, if I could jump in is uh, I yeah. think the, bu the budget hearings have been streamlined quite a bit. There used to be like a whole week mm -hmm. of budget hearings. And yeah. now they put a lot of the budget hearings on consent, I think. So there's actually a lot less budget hearings. And that that's, might be that, it. that, that yeah. wouldn't be all of it, but that'd be part of it for sure. Yeah, well, it's fewer meetings and some of those are the budget meetings. They're not meeting as often. Like one time last year, they met like three times in one week. And um, and we noticed that then, like we have to bring in more people to cover those days because it's different days than we usually do. And sometimes they come back in the evening and do a little a little bit in South County. So we had um, lots more meetings. So so that means less meetings. And they're also a captioning client. So less captioning. So that's that. Um, the city of Capitola is doing a little more than usual. They're up. So I raised them up the um, let's see. Uh, Santa Cruz Metro, 
they're up a little bit. They're ahead of budget now. So um, I went ahead and raised them. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was just going to comment. One of the things that um, would be helpful to people as you're looking at this to know is that um, you went through, if I'm correct, looked at our revenues. And this literally, next year's bud proposed budget just reflects exactly what's happening this year. Isn't that correct? Yes, yes. And I can't, I, I go through and I, I have nine months of this year. So I know that. And the next three months I project, but I use the exact percentage that they are ahead or behind to adjust. So with the city and the county, I actually went through and added up a number of every meeting so that I would know exactly how much captioning they would need and exactly where they are. And that's why I was able to discount the, well, I sadly had to discount the number on the board of supervisors, but you'll see the city of Santa Cruz is way ahead of their budget. They're at 85% now. So um, they were at 85% halfway through the year. So we raised them up a lot. And, um, but that's, it's totally accurate. I've calculated the numbers for every one of these meetings. Um, you can see SEC RTC is a little ahead this year. So we raised them up a bit. I left the facility um, use the same because it is about the same, but I project it will be higher this year. Um, but I just rather go low now and over deliver. Um, SLVWD is down a little bit. Um, because they just are. I think that they had a lot of uh, problems with um, their water system broke and they were doing a ton of meetings for a while. And now they're kind of back on an even keel. Uh, PVUSD is a little bit ahead. So we added a little bit for them. So Kell Creek Water District is, um, uh, we know what they used to do. So we're putting them in where they used to be. And uh, they're, they haven't been, they weren't with us last year, so that's a zero, but that's where they are now. Um, donations are about $1,000 because we usually get a few donations during the year. And we still have some donated guitars we can, will sell. Um, miscellaneous interest and income, that is our, that is our, um, uh, our investment in treasury bills which um, right now that it's working away, we have got um, uh, money in treasury bills and we are making money on that money. Um, production services, um, that last year we did 4,500. We didn't expect that. <laughs> we usually, we used to do six and we went down to four during the pandemic and it is rising up a little bit, but you never know. So I just put it in at four. Um, closed captioning, that's exactly the number. We figured out exactly how many meetings we had last year, how long, and we filtered out, you know, we, we only caption the parts where they're talking. And so, you know, we don't count the setup where we, we go and set up and we go and tear down and we do things and they take breaks. And we have just exactly, um, Victor uh, tracks just the captioning time versus, uh, cause he gets the meetings and he knows the times. So uh, this is exactly uh, what we'll spend in captioning for both uh, what we'll earn in captioning from the city and the county. And the equipment lease program is um, stable. We haven't leased any more equipment, but if we do lease some equipment to uh, an agency, this will go up. And I, I imagine that'll happen this year, but we aren't sure. So I didn't wanna put anything we really weren't sure of in here. Um, Advertising is will be eight thousand dollars, and these are these are you know, and I know that because I've actually hired a person to do it for us, so that's what it's going to be. Um, the bank charges are about two thousand dollars, and um, that's one of those funny ones where if we make more money, those will go up. <laughs> so hopefully we will, and you'll see a rise over here. But it will mean that we've made more money than we projected. This takes care of what we expect to earn. Uh, dues and subscriptions about a thousand dollars, and that's for you know we we pay dues to um, uh, different organizations like the organization for community media and office supplies. Those seem to be right on the money right now. Um, production expense is is it was what we spend. Um, we spent more this year actually in postage and freight, but that was because we sold some things and those people did pay for the postage, but it, it just comes in as a sale like and not, not broken up into postage and something. So that looks a little bit different, but we are confident in this number. 
Um, printing is the same as it always is. Facility plot supplies, that's about what we use. Um, according to our last year's numbers, uh, we always have to buy a business license and that's what it costs. Um, this is the telephone in the system and that's that's an accurate number. That's exactly what we really spend. Um, this is uh, every year we have to do an audit. We actually don't do an audit. We do a compilation. The county has okayed that. It still says audit in the budget, but it's a compilation. Um, the We have legal fees. And oh, oh, I see what happened. I'm sorry, there's a mistake here. That should be 35, not 3,000, but I can go back and fix that. Okay. Um, that's for legal uh, equipment technicians. That is um, kind of help for Victor in this lab. If um, things happen that he needs help with, he he knows a lot, but he doesn't know everything. And every once in a while, we have to bring Nick in or somebody to solve a problem. So that's there for them. That's our captioning. Um, uh, that's the cost to caption. Come on. Um, when we caption. Uh, when we caption things, we have to pay a company to help us. And that is the, the cost that it is to caption, but we make more than that. So uh, that works out as a benefit in the end. Um, this we, this year, we have a little more money in training and conferences because I'd like Victor to be able to go somewhere and, and meet his peers and, and learn some new things. And I haven't convinced him to go ever, but I'm, I still try. Um, this is uh, travel and meals and special events we haven't done anything like that because of the pandemic we used to go to thanksgiving lunch we, i used to take everyone to lunch for thanksgiving and then we also used to have a christmas um a meal with the board and we haven't done that either but um, this year if we should be able to i think if everything goes well um, so that's part of that staff development number. These are our salaries. And right now um, they are the same, um, but there is money built into another line here where we will, um, that's down below a little bit, um, where we have money for raises. They're just not uh, approved yet. Um, this is the, these are, and these are not full salaries. 20% uh, of everybody's salary or of, these three salaries, well, yeah, is inside um, the capital budget and we have permission to do that. So, oh, actually there's four of them. These four salaries have money somewhere else as well. Um, these are the government technicians uh, who actually run our meetings. And this line is where we put extra money for, for raises for um, everybody this year. And instead, we usually give a 3% raise, but we're going to give a 4% raise because the cost of living has gone up. And we probably should have done this a year ago, but it was the pandemic and you know, things were dicey. Now we have the money to do it. Um, this is our payroll tax number. It, it went up a little bit. We we factored a little more in there because if we do raises, the, they'll, be, they'll be higher. <laughs> and, um, this is our workers' comp number. Our dental went up. This Not our dental, but our health. And we, we give full health coverage and dental and vision. And it went up this year. And uh, vacation payouts are the same. Um, Victor and I try really hard to use up our vacation time so we don't build up a lot of money in there. And these are, that's the total for benefits and package. Our operating is um, 3,008. And uh, we actually um, have, probably will earn more money than that. We'll have 13,000 left over even after we give raises. So that's our, our projection. I'm gonna move on to the capital budget. I don't know why this is crooked. <laughs> it's like, I don't know why, but there it is. So um, these are the. This is our revenue that we get from the county at six hundred thousand dollars, and um, it comes in quarterly. Uh, uh, leasehold improvements. We put twelve thousand dollars in there because we'll probably have to do some things, like we'll have to fix the sign and other things like that that happen. Um, insurance will go up this year. I talked to our agent to find out how much, two reasons, because insurance just goes up, but also because we have more to insure. We have that, an extra, I don't know, 1,500 square feet now. So um, we'll have to pay for that. And she figured this was a good, this was probably pretty close to accurate. We'll see what actually happens. Um, 
facility equipment rentals, sometimes we have to rent something. And so we put a little money in the budget in case we do a generator or something like that. Um, so far, you know, we have been lucky and haven't had to do that, but we could if we needed to. Uh, this is the lease now that we've added the extra um, space. Um, we have a we don't repair much equipment. Um, we usually just replace it, but we do keep a thousand dollars because Victor's very good with computers, and he often will just fix one for us instead of replacing it if it's young enough. And so we have a little money in there for that. Um, this is the the uh, equipment that we will uh, buy that uh, can be depreciated. That would be like things over a thousand dollars. This is what we'll buy that's under a thousand dollars. This is like cables and small things. Uh, the telephone is oh this is our grant program um that's uh the hundred thousand dollars the county gives us to run our equipment grant program and that's the equipment that we buy and give to schools and the county office of education and um we that's what we buy our padcasters with and so on uh telephone communications and internet that's the internet that we put in the building so we can get our signal to the county building where it'll go to the head end uh, this is our copy machine. It's a little more than it was last year because uh, our lease expired and we hated that copier. So we got one that's better. And uh, and this one, it's so exciting. It won't help you very much, but we'll be able to uh, print by just using our little fobs. We won't have to type in a number every time because none of us can remember that number. And software with a service is a little lower this year because two things, now we're using cable cast equipment, uh, the tightrope equipment you might remember from the past, and we don't have to pay for um, help. <laughs> and with Telview, we had to pay for almost $5,000 for help. So we subtracted that out. And we also have a pretty big Zoom account because uh, we've been doing all the Zoom meetings for all of the organizations and they use our Zoom account. So we won't need that this year. They'll all have their own accounts. And um, so that made that a nice, that was a nice difference there. That saved us some money. This is our music license so that we can use music without uh, problems. And um, this down here, this peg related labor, that's the 20% I mentioned. That's part of my salary, part of Victor's, part of Mel's and part of Ian's go in here. And that once again, that is with permission of the county. That's okie dokie by the county executive. So that's it. All right. Um, comments, questions, anyone? Uh, Charlene, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. Uh, that was my main concern uh, was the cost of living adjustment. So I was very uh, and I calculated it, and it's what five thousand eight hundred eighty-two dollars four percent. So I definitely think our staff deserves that, and with uh, with uh, inflation and being what it is, um, yeah, I think yeah. it's uh, well, 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 not not just deserved, but. Uh, necessary so i'm glad to see that that's included in the budget um sorry to see that the county meetings are going down hopefully uh maybe they'll take a turn <laughs> for the better <laughs> so uh, i know on the one hand you like to see your county be efficient <laughs> on, the other, <laughs> on, the, on the other you kind of wish they'd be a little freer right and i guess the question with that so that i mean it's under county board of supervisors meetings but we were doing planning commission meetings and oh we, we were, still do those oh yeah yeah. And that's all that's all under county board of supervisors. Uh, oh no, they're all the in county here. things. Okay. We don't we we do we were doing the county planning, but they stopped. So right. that was a, that was an account that went away. Um yeah. we do do the city planning. I think that is under the city of Santa Cruz. But the rest of these all of these over here are different different organizations that we do, the water districts, the um we do the um SCTMD, the Santa Cruz Metro Transit and um, also, uh, oh gosh, the Regional Transit Authority also. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of them and they're all in that big long list. Okay, great. Keith, I recognize Keith. Yeah, so the question is, you said that you were going to raise the legal fees in this budget. Yeah. So when we make a motion, it should be recognizing that the legal fees increase. Does that mean something else will decrease? No, because we have extra money in the budget. See the bottom line, thirteen thousand. So I'll I'll Got just it. take five hundred dollars out of there. 
All right. Well, I would move approval with the change of the legal fees. I did it. I just accidentally did it in the wrong side. I put it in the last year's budget. <laughs> okay. We have a motion on the floor to approve the 2023-2024 budget with the um, addition to the legal fees. Did I hear a second? A second. All right. We have a second from Janice. Any discussion, um, further comments? Well, great. Let's have a, um, a voice, I mean, a, a roll call vote on this, please. Okay. Chair Lanier. Yes. Director Maziars. Yes. Director Gudry, yes. Director Hall. Yes. Director O'Driscoll. Yes. Director Mannheim. Yes. Director Rand. Yes. Director Warren. Yes. Director Shaw. Yes. Yay. All right. It's an unanimously approved. Thank you, Becca, very much. Um, and thanks to Mel for combing through all this um, and putting it together and making the corrections and to the Finance Committee for meeting last week and going through this very carefully. Um, it's good to have this done and in order as we um, you know, early really, and so we pass it on to the county. So well done, uh, good presentation. Okay, let's move on. Um, we can discuss low power television opportunities and appoint an ad hoc committee to prepare for an eventual LPTV license auction. So by way of background, I'll do a little bit and then Becca, you can um, chime in too. We um, contracted with a, um, consultant basically to do a search um, for LTV, LP TV opportunities and have found that there, um, I guess, is an opening. Um, mm -hmm. We don't know when the auction is. And the question is whether we can get prepared in order to act uh, swiftly when we have the opportunity. Becca, do you want to add to that? Um, that's pretty much it. They have sent us a report. They did give us the report. And uh, it's it's a uh, some some um, text and a lot of maps. And um, Keith has figured out which antenna has the one station on it, and it's the one at um, UCSE. So um, we do need to kind of they they just send you the report, and it's up to you to ask questions. So we kind of need to review the report, see you know, put together the questions that we have for them and then they will answer them for us. Um, that's what they say. They say the part one is making the report and part two is telling you what you need to know about it, but um, they want to have us ask questions. So I think if we can have a few people who would be willing to read the report and think of the questions, uh, then we can talk to them about, you know, what are the next steps we need to take to be ready? Because what happens is these auctions, they're not on a schedule. They occur when the FCC decides to do one. And so uh, we want to be ready with whatever we have to submit. And this report is a lot of what we have to submit. But we want to make sure we have everything, all our ducks in a row, so that we can act fast when it happens. Because if we don't, someone else will probably get the station. Right. right. And our contract with the um, the consultant does that include um, their help when we apply for the or we, we submit to the auction or or put in a bid, or would Not that be extra? No, it they will answer all our questions and and tell us what to do, but they. Okay won't do it for us. They okay. are basically engineers. And a lot of this report is engineering. And that's what the FCC wants to know. And they've given us like three options of, I think it's three, isn't it, Keith? Like three places on the antenna we could be right. and who we would reach if we did that. And like we could reach billions of people, but we would be all over the Monterey Bay, really. So we'll be reaching sailboats. So where do we want to be? And where can we be? We want to do some research we'd need to talk to the owner of that tower and see what it would cost to be on there and stuff like that. Or if there's room, can we be on there? So there's a right. bunch of stuff. And I think if we can, if we can get some questions together that basic in our minds, what, what do we need to know? I think they can fill in the blanks and, and more questions will arise and they're happy to answer all the questions. Okay, great. Cause I've looked at the report and a, a lot of it was way over my head. I'd need to dive into that again. And 
Keith, I think, has looked at it closely. Thank you, Keith, for that. Um, any other questions? Anyone like to um, join us on this? I think I'd like to participate. Um, Tom, yes, great. Or do we have a, and Keith, I have, and David, is there any um, prohibitions against um, a quorum on an ad hoc committee? Do we have? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you need to keep it below that number. Okay, so it'd be four or or fewer. Um, so let me put down Keith, Tom, um, David, you expressed interest. Were there anyone else? And I said I would. So that's four there. So I guess we're okay if um, any... Anybody else dying to be on this? Uh, I'm interested, but I'm I'm going to bite my tongue. Okay, because uh, <laughs> I'm I already got enough going on. Okay, I, I really well, look forward. You. I look forward to um, hearing what you all. Okay, so we'll come up we'll get together, sure. go through this, come up with some questions, try to push it forward, and then uh, keep in um, contact with the board and let folks know you know how this is progressing. We could have a um, you know an update in a month or two, Becca. Would it be okay if Matreya wants, if we send him the report and he can review it and think about it as leisure and not have to participate, but maybe give us Ab thoughts? Absolutely. A a any board member, I think, um, is welcome to this report. There's no um, no reason why you shouldn't be able to, to look at it. You, yeah, I think you might find it interesting. I, I definitely would love to see it. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for considering that. So yeah, we send him that. Okay. Send any, that I report. can send it to anyone. Is, does anyone else want to see it? I'll oh, see it after why did you just say it to all of us? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you can just yeah. ignore it if you don't yeah. want to see yeah. it. You know, yeah. if we don't have time, we don't read it. And if we have time, we <laughs> may find us a good bedtime reading. Oh no. Because then, yeah, I mean, we'll just be yeah, discussing this bedtime reading, and, and um, you, you, you may want to know a little more yeah. what's going on. Well, a lot of it is pretty technical, as I say, but, but it's interesting. Yeah. Okay. I might okay. suggest next time, uh, Keith or somebody from the committee spend 10 minutes and explain what we get to us. And I don't think we need any more because it probably be beyond, well, I know more than I let on, but I don't want to commit more energy than I have, <laughs> but right. I'd be curious. <laughs> okay, no, that's a good, uh, I'll, um, we'll have a discussion item um, next meeting and we can. Uh -oh. What's going on, Rebecca? Yeah, right. uh, I was wondering who was the leader of this committee's. Um, well, who would like to be the leader of this committee? I nominate Keith. <laughs> <laughs> so, do we need a motion for this ad hoc committee? Um. I don't know. Any uh, parliamentarians here wish to? Well, I think the chair can appoint any ad hoc committee he wants to. Okay. So I will, um, just for the record, I will uh, appoint an ad hoc committee to look into low power television opportunities and report back to the board with um, Director Gudger, Director Mannheim, Director Warren, and myself. Um, and we will. Um, I appoint Director Gudger as the chair of that committee. Sorry, Keith, but I'll um, I'll co-chair it with you. <laughs> but you're, I think, the most up to date on it and um, the most savvy with this, this stuff. So you deserve it. We deserve you to be there. <laughs> okay. Um, so that was my 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 order. I don't know that we really need a motion. So that's done. Any other uh, discussion, comments? Thank you, um, everyone. Um, education committee report. I don't have a written report, but do we have a, an oral report? Uh, Director Warren or Gudger? Yeah, I, I was gone for 10 days, so I, I pawned off on Keith. Everything goes to Keith, yeah. <laughs> well, then Keith had a little bit of a disaster in his family, so if he did one, that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we, we didn't meet, um, but based on Becca's availability, we decided not to do the April um, 
what do you call it? Art walk? <laughs> What's it called? Open studio? Oh, no, no. Is it open studio? No, it's not open studio. Oh, no, so, no, like, uh, first Friday. First Friday. First Friday. <laughs> So if, art rooms. if uh, the executive director is available in April, we will attempt to do something in May. Okay. And did I, oh, I said Matilda disappeared. I wondered what that was. That's her chair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's her throne. It looks like. Yeah. There you, there you are. <laughs> um, any uh, questions, comments, discussion on education? All right. Well, thank you. Um, number 11 is the board chair's report. I really have nothing to report other than, I guess, just discuss this, um, our meeting situation. Um, Tom and I are gonna look into uh, a little more details on the Brown Act regarding our committee and whether we're subject to it. We made kind of an exception. I thought we were gonna meet more in person this time. We made an exception under sort of disaster circumstances and to be more convenient with Zoom. So we're gonna look into that um, and we will keep you informed. I think the hybrid meeting may be, in the fact that we're learning more about that, and Becca was talking about that earlier, maybe where we end up, um, where some folks can participate remotely, occasionally, and others not. So we are looking into that and I'll keep you informed. Any comments, discussion there? Okay. Um, any board member or staff uh, request for specific items to appear on next meeting? None. Announcements, any announcements? Um, Janice. I don't, it's not really an announcement. I just wanted to say that um, after the last meeting, I started following us on Instagram and I don't know who's doing the posts, but they're fabulous. No, they're really good, great visuals, succinct, understandable. I have nothing but praise. I don't know who's putting it together, but they're doing a fabulous job. Well, thank you, Janice. That's so nice to hear. The one that was so crazy when we had the wallpaper guys in to do the mural. She was <laughs> texting me like, can we get live video of it? And I was like, well, okay, we got a guy on a ladder. So um, they, she has like great, she just seems to know the, the milieu. So she does all the templates and puts together all the wording and really, it's really good. Out. It's really good. Doing good. Thank so you. This is, yeah. this is now who's, um, sort of our advertising social media consultant that you've brought in. Great. Yeah. Well, really yeah. 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 She knows all the lingo and how we have to do reels and stories and right. we send her video clips when things happen and photos of, we did um, some St. Patrick's Day stuff mm -hmm. and we did Excellent. women's and International Women's Month right. and we did a daylight savings time and whatever's happening, That's great. we have something to say. Well, thanks for bringing that up, Janice. I appreciate that because I yeah. wasn't Check really it aware out. of it. Sure. I will. Keith, you're on mute there, buddy. We um, we had another one day animation class at the library. Um, it went really well. We had eight students for seven computers, <laughs> but that worked out okay. We had two on one machine and they had fun. Uh, it was kind of interesting. The librarian said this hadn't happened to her before, but it certainly happened to me at the library. We had about three students show up who didn't register and about two students who registered not show up. So that's, that's, why, we, that's why we ended up with eight. Uh, mm -hmm. The Reel is playing on community TV already. Uh, just a second, I'll tell you when. Tuesdays at 6 p.m. and Saturdays at 6.30 p.m. Victor already has it scheduled. Is there anything on that or like after it that says, you know, if you're interested in the animation class, where to go? No, but I could put that. I mean, it's it's always on the library calendar. We're looking at maybe the next one being May 27th. Yeah, I think it'd be fun if you, it's great promotion I like have, this. You I can learn to do this. Email May 21st. 21st, you're right, Matilda. I pay attention, I read your emails. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't pay attention to my email. So. Uh, well, I if you could put it, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. 
that's it for my now. All right, thank you. Any other announcements? Um, we'll move to item number 14. And I learned something earlier, which is a motion to adjourn does not need a second. Matilda? I moved. <laughs> I am so moved. <laughs> all right. Uh, we have a motion on the floor to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. 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 All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye, Very everybody. Bye. 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 Take care. Stay dry tonight. Yeah. <laughs>